Awesome. Looking forward to this. <laughs> you see, I see you uh, checked off. Uh, you believe it's a spinning globe. Is that still the case? Listen, I want to believe <laughs> that the earth is flat. Why do you want to believe the earth is flat? You get ostracized, you lose all sorts of opportunities, or you just want to be ahead of the awakening. Yeah, I listen, I I think that there's uh I believe that there's a lot of bullshit out there. That I do believe. Same page. And so uh nothing surprises me anymore. I'd like this to be true, but most of what I see says no. All right. And who do we have joining us here? Oh, this is Todd. Todd. You guys, yeah, you guys can hear me, right? Yeah, we yeah. can. All right, cool. Cool. Todd, I, I, I'm prob I'm I'm the most skept I'm the most believe I believe you the most out of these guys, <laughs> even though I'm still a ninety percent glober, I would say. All right. Well but, let, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Let's ground rules. Let's listen to each other. Let's listen. When you ask yeah. a question, listen to the answer, process it, and then respond. Jedi, Dave. Jedi's coming. Jedi's coming around. What is it, Joe? Twenty Fruit Ninja. Yep. Who Dave, I watch me? a lot of stuff that you're in. Uh, there's some. Um, the female host on the show will be here in a second. Okay. But I've seen your videos, and oh. we're we're not. You know, we're not here to make you look bad. We sure, really you can try. Are <laughs> you could try. <laughs> oh, I, I, well, listen, you know, I mean, you and Professor Dave, that was some shit. Now, did you watch? Now, now, Professor Dave, you know, even some flat earthers, some big flat earthers watching because, oh, man, that was awful. But then um, did you watch the Mind Shock of video afterwards? Yes. So Mind Shock tore it apart and basically showed that, you know, he had nothing but ad homs and friggin' straw mans. So... You know, that video is waking up tons of people. The, the the original recording. People are watching that going, you know, I'm a globe believer, but why did he act like that? I'm like, oh, thanks for reaching out. And then I send them a playlist. I'm like, here, just watch these videos and then you'll know. So it's all good. It's all good. When you have the truth on your side, when reality is on your side, it's really a no-brainer. It's so easy. Yep. So You know what me and Joe always talk about? Because now I'm friends with a whole bunch of flat earther on Facebook. That's a big part of their daily life, huh? What is? flat earth like all their posts like you never see posts about their family and their kids every post is about <laughs> flat earth and tests and all that stuff well the 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 truth is when you find out about flat earth you know i say flat earth is like no other topic because let's say you you get a new hobby or a new game or a new car or, or something you you're into it and then you kind of just like lose interest in it for a while you get tired of it Flat Earth affects yeah. every single person every single day for the rest of their life. It becomes, for lack of a better word, obsessive. But why not be obsessed when uh, your entire life has been living in a lie and reality is far more empowering um, than than the stupid lie that we're living in? So we'll see. Let's go. Let's uh, let's uh, we're waiting for her to start the show. So Jedi, we're good, right? It came up as S H E R. Just, just remember, she's Jedi. It must have came up this way because it's on Zoom. You I don't see Jedi? her. I don't see her. Yes. I don't think she's going to use video. She's kind of secretive. <laughs> secretive. Okay. <laughs> it's her. It's her. Uh, what do you call it, Joe? It's her thing. Mysterious. <laughs> she's she's, uh, she's one of her many things. Jedi. That is for sure. Yeah. yeah. And now, Dave, just so you know, Jedi generally believes anything anybody comes on and tells her. <laughs> well, that's bad. That's really bad. Don't do that. And here's the thing. Don't believe anything I say. None of it. Go verify this stuff yourself. Go verify yourself. And here's the thing. Use your God-given common sense. We all have it. Okay? But we're trading it in for nonsense because we can't understand big numbers we can't understand concepts that are so ridiculous they're un-understandable and therefore we go well i can't understand that and therefore i have to trust a guy in a bow tie who lies who's a failed comedian and i have to get my information from him okay <laughs> so uh, joe you know you know what i want to find out that Dave, what dave thinks because dave you live in connecticut joe lives in connecticut do i live I'm in, in connecticut Boston. do i do you believe i live in connecticut or do you know i live in connecticut I, I believe from what you said. You, you believe it, but you don't know it, right? 
Right. Now, now, oh my now, now you can, you can, you can continue your life believing, and there's nothing else to do. Go take a nap when we're done. Or you can go online and really research me and find my Facebook and find my friends and maybe find my high school right. and find some current pictures and like, yeah, this guy lives in Connecticut. That's what it takes. Belief is easy. Belief is the enemy of knowing, as Crow Triple Seven Radio says. Knowing takes time and effort and energy. And so knowing that you live on a flat earth takes time and effort and energy. Believing you live on a ball with absolutely no proof whatsoever, that's easy. I believe I live on a ball, but I can't tell you why, but I'm not religious. Definition of religion or a cult is believing something and not knowing why you believe it. We'll get into it. What do you think? Did, did you ask your question? I'm sorry. What do you think? What do you think about the fire? What do you think about the fires coming down from Canada? Isn't so they that crazy? All, they all lit at the same time. They all ignited at the same time. You guys saw that video, right? All the the, the yeah, weather. I'm a, little, the, I'm a little skeptical on that one, though. That, that, well, you know, I'm with you. Somebody, also. somebody purposely. Well, well, hold on. So that 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 now you're getting into the why and stuff. The overwhelming thing over uh what's the word i'm looking for overwhelming we'll call it the goal of the globalists in my opinion is to depopulate the world by 95 percent. so they're they're doing everything possible everything possible and you know these fires are interesting because we have people reporting that they live on a way upstate new york two out two hours from canada and their skies never got darkened but new york turned orange like i'm here like my visibility was like a quarter of a mile okay how did the smoke get from there to here? And then why is it orange? And then um, you heard about that train uh, heist that, like, uh, sulf- what was it? Um, hexafluoride or, well, I'm, I'm forgetting what it was. It was. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the, yeah. the sulfur, whatever, whatever that stuff was that was stolen, missing, uh, it burns orange. It it's, makes an orange smoke. So right. I'm not saying it's that. I'm just like, hmm. Disappears, orange smoke, didn't cross over upstate New York, but got to uh, Manhattan. I don't know how that's possible. I don't know. That's what I'm telling you. I yeah. don't believe the official story. I don't, I don't know. It is that kind is of a, weird. That's, listen, that's a legit argument. Yeah. Right? And, and I think, you know, it's important when, when you're having these sorts of debates, as, as Dave knows, that you really, you, you can't really presume anything right ammonium, you know? ammonium nitrate and ammon- that's what was stolen ammonium nitrate and if you look at ammonium nitrate when it burns it makes the exact same color orange smoke i don't know interesting you know i yeah. don't i don't know i don't know maybe it's you breathe that air though right and it's i breathe horrible. that air and we're both here it's hot. well i breathe it i don't know i you know what i don't know enough about ammonium nitrate i don't know i don't know any i don't know a lot here's the thing flat earth there's no I'm sorry. No, no mask, <laughs> no mask on camera. <laughs> if you're going to be on camera, you can't have a mask on. Um, ammonium nitrate. Oh no. What I was going to say is flat earthers know that they don't know. They know, we know that we don't know some things we, but Globers think they know everything, but they don't know anything. They don't even know their own model. We have guys that go along boardwalks and beaches and stuff, $200 in their hands. And they go up to people like, Hey, do you think the earth is flat or a globe? And they're like globe, of course you idiot. And they're like, well, we're going to ask you three questions about the globe. And uh, you win $300, $200 if you can get them right. And the first one is how many times does the earth rotate in one day in the globular world? Go ahead, jo- Joseph. One. Very good. You're, you're, you're one third of the way there to your 200 bucks. Okay. Uh, I'm not offering you 200 bucks because I don't know how well researched you are, but a random person on the beach doesn't get this right. How fast is the earth spinning at the equator? Is it 27,000 something? I, yeah. I thought it was like more like, <laughs> I thought it was like 60,000. I don't know. Yeah, the spin of the earth, the spin, not the orbit, the spin. If you're on the equator, how fast are you moving? I'll give you a hint. The Earth is about twenty four thousand miles around. It takes one day to go around. How many uh, miles per 24. hour? So twenty four. So a thousand miles per hour. Okay, you lost the two hundred. Okay. And then the third one is how far is the sun? What's the orbiting speed? Anything? No one gets them right, but they defend the globe like they know it. They defend the globe like they know it. You know? It, yeah, I I chaperoned a field trip to my daughter for my daughter the other day. We went to the planetarium, and I was even talking to one of the dads. <laughs> I told them that you were coming on. And I'm like, what do you think about this? And the first thing he said to me is, well, we're just spoon fed everything as a kid. 
Very good. You know what? Here's yeah. the thing. We're spooned. Like when you go to school, you, it's globe this, globe that, planets, orbits of the sun and moon. The first worksheet you bring home is the, you know, the orbits of the, of the sun and the moon and the, and the earth, right? And this is all programmed into you before you could think. So to say, well, why, you know, the, 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 one of the big fallacies is uh, the majority fallacy. I forget exactly what it's called, where, well, how can you guys be right and 99% of the world is wrong? Because they were spoon fed globe stuff before they had the ability to judge anything, right? Go erase your brains. You know nothing about the earth. You just arrived here today. You don't know anything. Go outside and tell me, are you going to come up with a flat stationary earth or a spinning, orbiting, whirling, twirling, corkscrewing earth in a space vacuum? Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, so the, the, the burden of proof is on the, on the positive claim. Oh, we're spinning through space. Have you or anyone ever in history measured axial rotation? Answer is no. Have you or anyone in history ever measured curvature? No. Okay. Have you or anyone ever in history ever had high pressure, our atmosphere, adjacent to low pressure space without a physical barrier? Answer, no. Hey, can you go pick up some propane for the grill tonight? But don't bring the tank. Just bring the propane. Okay. Can you do that? Because you need to be able to do that if you live on a globe. <laughs> All right. Thank you for coming. Joseph's already a flat earther. We're done here. <laughs> so um, huh. J Joe wants to get in one of those moon landers and have you drop it in the ocean because it seems like it's really airtight. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing I always show people that are that are so, that are globers like us. I'm like, you have my app. Though. You have my app. Good. You have the app, so yeah, you can pull up. Yeah. it's at the tip of your fingers. So, 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 Joseph, look at this. Let me ask you a question. You have a you you own your home. You live. Yeah. You, okay. You have a basement. A basement that you never I'm go in it. Oh, you're in the basement. Okay. Yeah. So imagine your basement's unfinished, and you hire some contractors to sheetrock your basement, and they do it like this. Okay. Are you going to pay them? No. <laughs> this is an airtight spaceship. That does not look airtight. Okay, you would you you would probably kick their ass. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at look how stupid this is. This is shape cray paper. I don't paper mache and and cray paper. Cray paper. Whatever. Yeah. It's yeah. Foil tape. You know. And if you really go in and look at at like look at the legs, you think that the legs would all be made the same, but some of them have foil wrapped around them. Some of them they ran out of foil, so they changed it to something else. I mean, it's literally a friggin' fifth grader art project. Okay, it's <laughs> so stupid. Ask any engineer. Does this look sturdy? I mean, here, here's the other thing. So they were worried. One, of the, I remember uh, as a kid. You know, I'm I'm a little older than you guys. Um, they were talking about the moon landing. They were, they don't know how deep the powder is on the moon, and they were afraid that the thrust of the, of the engines could blow a hole so deep that the, that the lander could fall in it. Right. Here's you guys ever hear about that. Mm -hmm. Right. They're, they're afraid that, yeah. uh, that, that it could, it could blow a hole so deep that um, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't, it would, you know, just be a problem. So uh, this moon lander, there's no, blown away dust. There's no dust. It should have blown dust everywhere. Should have landed on the feet. Everything is crisp, perfectly clear. There's no dust crater. Now down here, it's hard to say, is the, is the nozzle of the, of the rocket. These guys now have to go skeet shooting. What do I mean by that? Well, this thing has to fire them into the sky to meet the orbiter that's coming around at a couple thousand miles an hour. And they have to gain speed and connect so they can go back home. Okay? This is, this is what they're doing from the moon. <laughs> okay? All right. And when I say skeet shooting, it's because one a vacuum doesn't really work in space. But if you watch this, watch this. Oops. Um, and um, it is going to take off. Remember, the nozzle's down here. And it's still down there. There's no nozzle on here. So this thing went poof, right? With two guys in there with not in chairs, right? Like imagine if they moved, the thing would start tumbling. Right. And now this is just going to go up into the sky and meet up with the orbiter and dock perfectly airtight. OK. This wait And then who I've watched? Yeah. Who panned up? Who panned up? How did they do that? How did they get the film back to Earth? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It, 
that seems over 50 years ago that that kind of technology i'm i'm totally on board now with the moon landing hoax i've been doing like going through rabbit holes with this right i mean over i watched that apollo 9 um that thing on netflix where they found like 50,000 hours of tape have you seen that uh but i re refreshed my memory because they lost all the tapes they lost all yeah, they oh, no, like they didn't lose them they because of budgetary restrictions, they taped over them. Remember when you used to have VCR tapes and you would tape over yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. Right. They taped over all of the moon landing footage. Thanks for laughing, Joseph, because they're laughing at us. We need to laugh back at them. All right. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> I, I'm uh I want to show you one more one one other thing. So this is if I can find it. Um, so this is now we got the only to light on the moon is the light is the sun. So the sun lights over there and his shadow was going to the right. And then so I'm panning to the right, panning to the right, panning to the right. Now the kind of the, where's the sun? Is it over there? Or is it kind of over where we're looking from? And look at his shadow. It's kind of going away from us, panning to the right, panning to the right, panning to the right. And look at his shadow. It's now going the opposite direction. How is that possible with a single source light, the sun? Right? How's that possible? Yeah. Right, it and moved then, to one side to the other. Yeah. yeah, and so so now watch this. Watch this is a watch in his visor. You're going to see a reflection of some lights. I see two of them right now. Two square lights in his visor. One, two, one, two. Now watch when he turns. Now it could be one light being reflected. I don't know. It, I'll I'll tell you what I think it looks like. He turns three, four, yeah. four lights. You see him? One, two, three, yeah. four. What are those lights? You know, could it be something like this? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. if you're listening, yeah, if you're listening right now, it looked like there was like four like bulbs shining on his. Uh, what would you call front that? Like, lighting. Mask? It's front lighting. It's front light. I, I literally it, am looking into yeah. front lights right now. That's right. why I'm lit up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. It's exactly. And they huh. didn't bring any lights to the moon. They they even admit they brought no lights to the moon. OK, I don't listen. I'm not going to quote Joe Rogan as a source of anything. <laughs> Please don't. Talking, because... <laughs> Go ahead. He was. No, he was talking about. He said one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. He said he used to not believe that we went to the moon. And then he saw evidence that he knows was falsified, fake pictures. Um he said he thinks it was from the training missions and that they basically patched work what was really happening with the training exercises, but that it definitely happened. And I thought that it's retarded. You saw evidence that it didn't happen and it made you think it did. That's like backwards. Yeah, because he can't get his lies straight. His famous quote was, there's no way you'll ever convince me that we went to the moon. No way. And he was becoming the number one moon hoax advocate. Well, this one, his podcast was really just starting to take off. Then he went on vacation. Weird. All of a sudden went on vacation. Came back. I think the first guest he had on was Neil deGrasse Tyson. And Neil, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe we didn't go to the moon. And then he got a multi, multi, multi-million dollar contract. He got his own television show, Joe Rogan, it discovers everything or whatever. And his first one was debunking chemtrails. Another, another, like, what? Okay. Yeah. And, and I don't know, does the word sellout mean anything? You know, I mean, I love Joe it's Rogan. Home. Yeah. Yeah, hey, uh, it's sitting home. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so, so now. Actually, just recently, he was he threw out some comments the other day about um, about the moon landing, about it. Maybe it wasn't real. So I don't know what's going on. Like, you know, maybe he's they're giving him a little leeway to gain some of his credibility back. But let me ask you a question. You see this? This is the lunar rover, right? How do they fit it in that that number that badly sheetrock basement job I showed you on the moon? This thing was in there with two guys <laughs> with with golf clubs, with, you know, yeah. all sorts of stuff. And. And we, we did an analysis of this. It's the chassis of a Jeep, okay, of an old, like, a Vietnam-era Jeep, okay? This is an umbrella, like, I don't know, $5 on the street in New York City. And these are beach chairs, okay? They literally weaved, webbed yeah. beach chairs, okay? Right? And so this thing's scooting around the moon, and they're hot rodding all over the place and just playing it back in slow motion. You play it back at double speed, and it, well, it looks like they're on Earth. Huh, weird, okay? And um. 
And you know how much that thing cost? $38 million back then in the 1970, right? Today, this costs $37 million. <laughs> what, 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 what do we got? Jeff Bezos' yacht or something? Okay. <laughs> no, Jeff Bezos doesn't have a yacht this nice. No. Okay. Come on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They spent $38 million on that to tape some beach chairs and an umbrella to some kind of. Those yeah, are not beach buggy. chairs. Those are space chairs. Those are special <laughs> space moon chairs. And then if you watch Dave, the video of them going around, they're literally dummies in there. Like they're, they're it's like claymation. It's so stupid. You know, they, someone has to call us next time. They, we could do it a lot cheaper than that. Yeah, I recognize those chairs from when I used to go down the Jersey Shore and stay at the Thunderbird. Those were yeah, the, well, those, those, those are like, chairs from the seventies. <laughs> yeah, those that's chairs. exactly that's what that chairs. looks like. Right. It, it's yeah. not. They look like that because that's what they are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Jedi, I'm curious if Dave has this. Remember someone sent us the clip a couple weeks ago of the mouse on the International Space Station? Do you know about that, Dave? You mean on the, oh, yeah. not on the International Space Station, on the rocket going up to the space station. Okay. It was oh, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. So, and then they immediately, uh, it probably was a mouse. Um, by the way, they got a zipper, right, to take a leak. How does that work airtight? How do you whip your wiener out? And, and how does the zipper stay airtight? Okay. <laughs> on the moon. Okay. <laughs> Right. And that, he's, they're wearing freaking snowboarding suits, for Christ's sake. How come they don't blow up? Go Google, uh, you know, um, vacuum chamber experiments like soda can or there's one with like Stretch Armstrong. They put him in there. He explodes. He explodes when you take all the pressure out around him. OK, how come they didn't explode in these stupid freaking snowboarding suits? All right. Yeah. And whenever they show astronauts and stuff, they're always just having like the time of their lives, you know, like they're throwing just food, around, like, yeah, playing with water, with electronics all over the place, a gorilla suits running around the space station. OK, <laughs> <laughs> wait, what did you do? Uh, yeah, look, these are like L.L. Bean boots. Look at these. These are moon yeah. boots. What the frick is going on? All right. It is. It is so unbelievably stupid. It's um, it's ridiculous. We're going to throw a bunch of these pictures up on Crimes, Conspiracies, Beyond um, on our Facebook page so you can see in yeah. case you're listening on audio. If, if you're not listening, you, you guys are going to put this up on YouTube, I assume, no? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So just link link this under because people are going to hear this. And they're like, what the hell is he showing? Let me let me see that. Okay. So um, it's, you know, it, it's it's fun to listen to, but it's better to watch. Right? Yeah. Yeah, right. It's, I mean, we could we could stay on the whole moon thing forever, but you know the fact that they faked the moon landing doesn't prove that the Earth is a globe. But the only proof that we have that the Earth is a globe is from NASA, who faked the moon landing. So I don't know where you want to take yeah, it, but there, satellites. Let's talk about satellites then. Yeah, and satellites would seem to show around Earth from with they their will, beam. They back. would. So how does a satellite show a round earth? Does a satellite take a picture of a round earth? I, I don't uh, Do they take pictures? I, I would assume you could have a video feed on a satellite. Yeah. You you could assume that if a satellite was, but the, the favorite one is the Himawari 8 satellite, which is a Japan Japanese satellite that sends a picture back to earth every 10 minutes or every 15 minutes, supposedly. Right. And, um, and then that's their number one proof, right? And the pictures are, are just stupid. And, um, but they have active current weather on them, right? Um, but it always takes about 40 minutes. They're always 40 minutes late. Like, why, is it, why isn't it immediate? Why don't we get it immediate? If it's taking a picture, give it to us immediately, 40 minutes late. So uh, a whistleblower sent us a link to a NASA FTP site with, that wasn't um, locked. And we went in and we found... Um, thousands and thousands and thousands of folders of images so all of these images right and they were all of the images from the Himawari 8 oh very cool but then we found this we found hey this is the world radar um map of of the weather okay and then we found in there the blue marble uh the plain blue marble uh globe painting and how they wrap it around there and actually put um put the the you know the terminator line on there so it takes them like 40 minutes let me just jump forward here a little bit so so here's here's one right here so this is a picture and we found the raw picture it shows all of the earth 
all of there. So we can see the clouds over here and over here. Where's day and night? Or is it is it noon right here where the sun's right behind me? So if we we watch and I'm showing you where they are, then they put on the 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 Terminator line, right? So how did they see the star? The 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 if it's taking a photo, how did it see in the darkness? How did it get all the clouds over here? Okay, this is just a fake Terminator line, right? This is completely, this is ridiculous. Look how big these clouds are, okay? How do we see all of these clouds? They just, this is done in Photoshop. This is done in Blender. This is ridiculous, right? None those of it white works. things are clouds? Yes, those white things are clouds. Are... Look how big they are. They're bigger than some countries, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Because they well, can't make them. A... In reality, when you front. Yeah, no, it's not a stormfront. A stormfront. This is like a massive storm. Okay, um, when uh, when you when you look at um, when you look at uh, um, what the Earth looks like from high, it literally whites out. Okay, here is um, where am I doing? It, oops, I uh, I got rid of myself. Um, here I am. Okay, this is uh, this is what the Earth looks like from one hundred twenty thousand feet. Okay, it's whited out. You can't see anything, okay? And these vibrant colors going into space, it's all absolute and total nonsense. We get back to the satellites in a second, but, but um, I wanna show you, um, you know, here's some pictures of us, of, of the Australia side of the earth. Is this the one with Australia? Um, look at what, what color is the earth, okay? What color is the earth, right? And these are the official, whoops, why do I keep doing that? Um, these are the pictures of, uh, of the earth from NASA, right? This is the blue marble that was, that was on everyone's iPhone. Okay. Yeah. Um, what are they, what are they showing? Why am I, what is going on here? I'm, uh, oh, there we go. Sorry about that. The third, the third one over in the top row looks like a painting or something. They're yeah, all paintings. One. They're all paintings. This is the 2012 one. Let me show you, yeah. um, about that one. So. Um, where is it? I have it right here. All right, so here, well, here's one, 2012 and 2013. Look at the United States. Look how wide it is and look how small it is. Look at the color. I mean, maybe it was just good weather, better weather in 2013, you know? Um, it, it, it's, it's, you know, and then the blue marble one, um, Robert Simmon from NASA in an interview, he's a NASA, NASA visual artist. He said he made it in Photoshop. He was given strips of data and he created it in Photoshop um, to look like people would think it looks. OK, so he admitted it. So here's the here's the here's the one. So they NASA tells us the diameter of the Earth, a straight line through the Earth is seven thousand nine hundred seventeen miles. Right. Here's something we can measure. We can't look up at the sky and go, well, Venus is the same size as Earth. How do you know any of that? You don't know any of it. But we can drive across Mexico and take a boat across uh, the peninsula here and Baja. And we could say this is 934 miles and we know it. So now we have a segment. This segment is 934 miles. How many of them equal 7,900? Um, I think it's three and a half or, yeah. or, or whatever. No, no, like eight, eight, and a eight, half. Little over eight, eight and a half. Yeah, no, eight. Yeah. I'm sorry. Eight and a half. I'm saying you could probably fit three and a half. Eight and a half. It, it doesn't even fit on this page. Okay. So where's the rest of the earth? Is it on the other side? Okay. Where's the rest of the earth? Right. Yeah. So then we get a picture. Well, what about this yeah. picture from the space station? Look, you know, NASA showed us this and NASA showed us this. Well, what, what, what is the curve of the earth? Is it that or is it this? Because this is just this little area right here. Right. This is clearly just a fisheye lens. They love their fisheye lenses. Um, whoops, you're glitching out, Joseph. Oh. Um, me and me and Joe have talked about maps a lot. Yeah. Like how it doesn't. How, I don't know. How, I don't know if there's the exact science to it. People have figured out maps like two thousand years ago. Like how how accurate can it be? Well, absolutely. And uh, and so here here it is, United States, right? So this circle represents what we're seeing on this side of the globe. All of this. And this is all on the other side of the globe. Okay. If you can't figure out how that's possible, it's because you actually have common sense. Okay. You actually have common sense. So, you know, it goes, it goes on and on and on. Uh, here's another one. This one of Africa. Where's the rest of the globe? Right. Here's the other side. Look, here's the other side right now, but it only has this in it. 
right? It only has, <laughs> so all of this is on the other side. Well, how come we didn't see it on the other side? These are paintings by bad painters, right? Because if they made everything, tried to make it like how it really would look, it wouldn't, it would look weird and people would be going, that's not right. And, you know, they literally are dumbing us down. Joseph, can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. Um, Jedi, Jedi lives in Hawaii. Is there any, you have anything on Hawaii? Is there anything different about living there that, anything about Hawaii do you have? Yeah, well, Hawaii, you can see uh, some of the, on, on clear days, you can see uh, other islands that should be way, way over the curve. Let me ask a question. Is this, would this be hard to paint? You think you could paint this and make it look as real as this? Um, I know. It would be very difficult. Painting? It's a, it, well, it actually is a painting. Both of these are paintings. Which one's harder? One said, well, how would they paint that? I mean, I, how would they paint that? This is a painting. This is a painting. This is a painting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I think he's having some connection issues. He keeps disappearing. Oh, I'm, I'm here. Sure. Oh, you're there. Oh, when your here. video goes off, I, I lose. Uh, you, yes. You disappear. Okay. I'm just fixing something. I'll be back. For I'll allow it. I'll allow it. <laughs> you know. So, Dave, what do you think about the James Webb Telescope? What's up with that whole thing? <laughs> We're gonna get back to satellites. Don't let me forget. But let's hit James Webb. Um, wow. All right. So, the James Webb Telescope is the biggest joke ever on Earth. Okay. So, oh, you ever hear of the program called what the hell is it called? Um, uh, I forget the name of it, but it's a uh, it's a freaking art part. It's a free app on my phone, and I created a better. Yeah better picture than, than they did in 10 minutes with a free app okay and oh this is you doing that right this now is me i'm making a freaking james yeah. webb picture okay look at that it's amazing look at that if nasa showed a nasa fanboy that they'd be like oh it's so cool look at the magellanic cloud and and the, and the, you know oh look at these galaxies but what you didn't notice in space here take a look right here there's a very yeah. unique uh structure in space it's called flat earth dave Right there, it's me. it's me, I'm in space. I'm standing on a Magellanic cloud, all right? Um, you wanna get into the, the James Webb telescope a little more. Um, so there's my beautiful picture and I showed it to a Glober and they're like, they're defending it. And I'm like, oh, really, really, really? Did you guys see this picture that uh, I think it was, uh, no, an astronomer here on earth took a picture of a distant star. You guys saw this when it was out, in the, it was in all the news. Yeah. Do you yeah. like it? The, the, the red, red. Do you like it? Because it's a slice of sausage. He took it. <laughs> looks he like tweet, pepperoni. Or he something. tweeted it, and all the scientific magazines were were tweeting it, going, "Oh my God, what a great photo!" and everything. And and he got a lot of trouble. Got a lot of trouble. So so this is how James Webb works. Okay. So here's the Earth um, during our during our northern summer, and here's the Earth during our northern winter. But um. There is a spot, uh, you know, the sun has more gravity than Earth. So somewhere in between here, closer to the Earth, the gravity should be, be equal. And it can lock, you can, you can park something right in that, they call it a Lagrange point. If you're thinking that I'm talking complete and total bullshit, it is. But this is what they say, right? So you can find that spot. Like, like if you had two magnets and you're trying to measure it, get a little metal ball to float, you know, and not go to one or the other. So that's a, it's called Lagrange point. All right. So, so here is, um, oh, there, there's not, that's not what it is. Um, James Webb first image. All right. Oh, by the way, my image or James Webb image. Yeah. Tell them apart. <laughs> right. Yeah. My, my image or, uh, James Webb. Want to take a guess? Oh, um, I'm going to say that's yours. Yeah. No, that's James Webb. <laughs> ah, God damn it. Okay. Right. And then uh James Webb can get these pictures 4.6 billion light years away. <laughs> and uh this is a security camera at one of the bang bang events that happen, you know, 10 feet away. And that's what we get. Yeah. I think that's actually a galaxy on his face right there. This is he's actually a black <laughs> hole in the shape of a human, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So uh, wait, 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 hold on, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Hold on. Um, yeah. Yeah. Here, here is the launch of the James Webb Telescope. I'm going to go through this real quick. Let me just fast forward. Um, this, yeah. 
this play yet? Why is it going so slow? All right, so the James Webb goes up, and then they they immediately switch to cartoon. This is what they show us for the launch. This is this is the cartoon. Okay. Yeah. And then and then it deploys the James Webb when it's right over the Earth. Okay. So you can still see the cover. They always show the curvature of the Earth. Let me see if I can get to that point. Where is it? Um. Oh, this is basically this is just uh, I'm showing you the entire live stream was all a cartoon. Okay. Right. So this is what I want to show you. So. This is a James Webb over the, this is supposedly real. It's doing a selfie of itself and it's launching the camera. It's launching the, the telescope and then it's going to deploy. Now, what the heck are we looking at, right? So this thing is deploying itself. Now it's gonna open up, it's gonna open up its, um, its wings. Hold on, let me get a little closer. All right, so uh, uh, here it goes. So, so here it goes. Now the camera's breaking up. Now it's right above the earth. This is the earth right over here, right? So we're, yeah. what are we, 100 miles, 500 miles, 1,000 miles? I don't know. We're, we're very close to the earth and it's deploying it. So it's, it's gone out of the rocket and it's going to deploy its wings, all right? But we, we're losing connection already, okay? Mm -hmm. This thing then has to go to that Lagrange point a million miles away and park itself. How does it get there? <laughs> How's it going to get there? Okay, now watch watch the wings up here. I'm going to fast forward and look. Now it's putting out its uh, its solar panels or whatever. How is it going to get yeah. to the garage point and park itself? And how does that garage point, you know, and we get closer to the Earth uh, to the sun and farther from the sun? How is how is that? It's it's moving at like thousands of miles an hour just to keep the Lagrange point. You know, here on Earth, when they take a, you know, um, you remember the the image years ago that came out? It was on all the science magazines um, called the, the deep star field where they focused on a spot in the sky, the size of a grain of rice. They did like a 14 hour or 10, five hour exposure, whatever it was. Right. And they said that this giant telescope on the top of a mountain in Hawaii, I believe um, that it's on the cement pad and cement pads are like 10 feet thick and perfectly, you know, level that the, that the um, technician has to walk around in socks because they have shoes on a vibration, a slight little vibration could um affect the could affect you know could ruin the image okay i have to ask you a question <laughs> did they forget that the earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour orbiting at sixty six thousand miles an hour while spinning and chasing the sun at a half a million miles per hour when they're focusing on that point in the sky and they're worried about a little vibration <laughs> okay <laughs> right they People don't think. People yeah. just don't think. It's so absolutely, completely ridiculous. I know we never right. we just take for granted that we're spinning and stuff. We never really you, talk about it or anything like that. Yeah. All right, but you you also touched on something, and it's one of the things that's kind of held me back personally, Dave, okay. from buying this part and parcel. Okay. You mentioned uh, basically the seasons. Why are there different seasons on? different parts of the earth at the same time if it's flat okay i'm going to explain seasons to you we're going to take our time it's going to be very easy you're going to open up your mind to this concept and then you try to tell me how it doesn't work okay because you won't be able to but first this is satellites nasa puts up tens of thousands of satellites on balloons they're crashing all over earth people are getting videos of them before the you know the, the military shows up and picks them up but they're, NASA controls all the helium on Earth. Did you know that? They own all the helium companies on Earth. <laughs> and they use more helium that's than a, everyone that's a else combined. Yeah, that's a real thing, right? And this thing weighs like- Is that why there's a helium shortage? Yes, there's always a shortage, but enough for party balloons, <laughs> but not enough for rigid inflatable ships. And then they demonize, they, with the Hindenburg, they demonize hydrogen. You know, oh, my hydrogen, hydrogen bombs, explosion, oh, the humanity, another hoax. Okay, because they don't want us having airships. Because if you have an airship, hmm, you could go explore extended periods of time. You don't need to refuel. Hey, I want to go explore beyond uh, Antarctica. Oh, no, you cannot do that. You know, all the wars and fighting over resources and everything in this world. Um, what are two things that all of the countries agree upon? There's only two things. They all agree upon it. They're fighting for resources. They're fighting for land. They're fighting for this and that, right? But they all agree on everybody must get this thing stuck in their arm and nobody's allowed to go to Antarctica except for a guided tour of the outer lands. 
or the inner lands, depending on how you look at it. Okay? Weird. Weird, weird, weird. How much, how much is one of those trips to Antarctica? Like, like thousands, tens of thousands? Yeah, like 10,000 bucks or way more. And then they only bring you to a little tiny island and you don't really go anywhere. Um, you know, they, they just basically bring you to Deception Island next to Rothschild Island, right? Like, what's going on there? What, what is going on there, right? Do you at least get to pet some penguins or something? Yeah, you get, you get to see some penguins. They bring you here to this little tip mm-hmm. right here, okay? Which is bigger than some countries, okay? But no one gets to go out here. No one gets to see what's out here. What's out there, okay? It's a prison for your mind. We'll get that at the end. You just asked me about seasons, okay? And seasons are my absolute and total favorite. Um, let's do it this way. Let's go here. So um, in my app, the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, you can find all my stuff at flatearthdave.com. If you want to book me for a show, flatearthdave.com. If you want to find my socials, my interviews, everything, flatearthdave.com. If you want to find my app, flatearthdave.com. Okay. So um, seasons, 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 seasons. It was in here. Where did seasons go? Um, I had a graphic for you that I wanted to show you, but, um, so, so during, uh, so Joseph, during our winter, is the sun closer? Where are you look? Where are you located, Joseph? I'm assuming you're in America. Connecticut. You're in Connecticut. Okay. Yeah. All right. So during our winter, is the sun closer or farther from us than it is in the summer? It's further. Yeah. In the, in our summer. You're saying that because you're just going with the opposite of what you actually think. No, I, no. I, I, I don't. I really don't know anymore. Well, I don't know. Summer, it's hotter. <laughs> it's hotter. It's hotter in the summer. Why isn't the sun closer? It's farther. You're right. Okay, yeah. it's farther. So, why, why, why is it? Um, why? What causes the seasons? And the answer is, if uh, my microphone here was the sun. And the northern hemisphere is here. When we're tilted away, that sun spreads over a bigger area. Okay? So we're tilted away. It's over a bigger area. Because we're tilted away, it's lower in the sky, right? If the sun, if the sun was, you know, right here on the equator, right? And then we tilt it away, it's now lower in the sky. It's lower, right? When you tilt it away, okay. it, it just lowers yeah. it down. And that's why you think you have your season. So... Joseph, you and I decide uh, in February that we're going to go um, hang out and uh, it's freezing cold and we, we're hanging out on a football field and we're sitting 20 feet apart because we don't want to infect each other. We want to stay safe. Be safe, Joseph. Okay. Safety and, first. Dave, safety yes. first. And we're trying to drink our beers, but they're freezing. They're, they're, they're just the beers are actually freezing. It's not very enjoyable. And, uh, and then Todd comes over and he's got a heat lamp on a 15 foot pole, big heat lamp. And he holds it directly over your head, 15 feet above your head. You're like, whoo, that's nice. You take off your coat, your beer melts, okay? And I say, Joseph, where is that sun? Point, point, that, that heat lamp's your sun, point to it. And you'd point, oh, it's right up there, right? But from my perspective, it's still 15 feet off the ground, but it's over there, lower in the sky, like my winter sun. I can barely feel the heat. It's lower in the sky. It's farther away from me. Now, Todd decides to walk over to me, and he brings the, that, well, he keeps it at the exact same height. Now, you watch it, and you watch it go away, getting lower and lower and lower. I watch it approaching, getting higher and higher and higher. At all times, it's only 15 feet above the ground. Like, if you're standing under a streetlight, the row of streetlights on a flat street, the one above you is your summer sun, the one down the road, that's your winter sun. It's lower and farther. That's why you don't feel the heat. Okay. And um, if, if you look, you know, this is, these are the heat bands. Why are the heat bands equal on the equator when the earth is tilted? The earth is tilted. Okay. The, whoops. The earth is tilted. It should look, you know, why is that heat band following the equator? Right. It makes absolutely no sense until you look at it on a flat earth. The red area is the tropics, right? We live on the inside there, you know, and that's where it's warm because the sun goes over. The way the, way the sun works is this. The sun goes around once every day, once every 24 hours, right? It migrates into the Tropic of Cancer, which it's, over, it's almost over right now. So on the 21st, it'll be as close as it's going to get to Connecticut. That's when it's highest in the sky. 
And then six months later, that's our summer. And it's Australia's winter. Six months later, four, five, six, the sun moves all the way out to the Tropic of Capricorn and it's their summer because the sun is over them. It's farther from us. It's lower in the sky, shorter days, farther sun, colder. Okay. It's hot in between the tropics. That's the tropics, Tropic of Capricorn, Tropic of Cancer, mm. because the sun crosses over them twice a year. It never really gets that far from them. Six months in, six months out. But for us, it only gets near us, then it goes away again. It's near us and it goes away again. That's how seasons work. Now, if seasons were just because of the tilt, if seasons were just because of the tilt, why in June, when I'm on Long Island Sound and I see the sunrise in June, I could feel the heat immediately. When you think about it, that is the most severe tilted I could be away from the sun. And it's three and a half million miles farther away than, than, than in the winter. I, I, I'm looking at the sun. It's, on, it's near the horizon. I can feel the heat on my face. But in December, I can go out at noon, look at the sun at the highest point for that day, and I could barely feel the heat on my face. It's three and a half million miles closer. It's a much more direct angle to me at that time. It's 50 degrees in the air versus one degree off the horizon, an 89 degree tilt. I could feel the heat. I can't feel the heat, okay? Seasons prove the earth is flat. On the app, if you hit the question mark button and you go to uh, seasons right there, you hit that button and um, up come all the videos that they're hiding for you that will yeah. completely teach you about seasons, okay? Right, you, you put it seasons on a flat earth, none of those videos will come up, okay? I've watched all the videos multiple times. Um, what is up with the flat earth society? That's those not flat earthers. They want to like make us think something else. Google will lead you right to the flat earth society. Um, they want you, you know, they want you thinking that the earth is, um, that the earth is a disc floating in space. Right. Um, but no, no flat earther thinks that that's, that's where they'll lead you to. You no, know, Obama mentioned flat earth society. Uh, a half a dozen times in his speeches. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they want you going there because it's ridiculous, right? You know, whenever uh, mainstream media talks about it, talk about the flat earth, you know, Oh, why are we a disc? And they're all around planets, right? Um, you don't know what those are. They're lights in the sky. They look round. Saturn looks round to me. I think it's round, but that has nothing to do with the shape of the terra firma that we're standing on. Okay. So uh, one, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. you first. There, there is one more thing we do want you to bring up because Jedi and I, we did agree on this. We do think those astronaut videos are faked with like the harness. Like we're like, those, those do seem fake to us. Like, can you show you us know, those like, ones? Like they're, they're like, like they're faked or they're, they are faking it. No, we think that like yeah. that they're faking. Everything it. was staged. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. So what if our world was set up like this? Here we are, South America, America, right? Australia. And this is Antarctica, maybe a thousand miles wide, you know, and there's more land beyond Antarctica. What would you, what's another word for more? Can you give me another word for more? Extra. 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 What's another word for land? Terra. Terra. You say so you've heard me. Extra terra. Extra territory. So who would be living on the extra territory? extraterrestrials Dave. and if they came to visit us <laughs> if they came to visit you've been you've been listening very good if they came to visit us oh i'm a fan dave i'm a fan dude they i would really be, am like they i would said be i want to believe all this from outer space or the outer space right so um can we talk about emergency landings real quick yeah all right we can we go a couple minutes over is that all right yep um and then what and then you just asked me about something else the astronauts on like where they were like on harnesses and stuff yeah, like that. We started off with them. We'll finish up with them. That's great. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, Southern flights, here we go. So um, you guys, you guys are aware of Southern flights, right? Why Southern flights always go into the Northern hemisphere when Northern flights never go into the Southern hemisphere. Why is that? Should be some symmetry if we live on a ball, but there's none. Okay. So here is uh, an emergency landing from New York city to Hawaii and they landed in Seattle. Seattle's over here. Like, why didn't they land in California? Okay. On the globe. But if you look at it on a flat earth, 
Seattle is directly on the straight line between the origin and the destination, right? So here's another one. Um, London to Palace, Palestine? Or Pakistan. 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 Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Emergency landing in Moscow, right? Moscow. Th th now, this looks small. This is like 1,500 miles, okay? And it got there in a ridiculous amount of time. Super, super easy, super fast um, time. What? You have a question? I have a, yeah. And don't, I don't, I, I, is it possible though that it's because the earth is curved and moving that you would have to? <laughs> oh my God. If the earth was moving, how? Dave, <laughs> maybe I'm an idiot. I'm just asking. No, no, you're not an know. idiot because we all, we all had those same beliefs. Um, it's just weird that it's on every time they pick a space that's way out of the place, it goes, it works perfectly on a flat earth map, right? Again, another emergency in Moscow, Moscow's right on the line there, uh, stop in Calgary, way out of the way, Calgary's right on the line there. It just, it just goes on and on and on emergency landing in Manchester, right? Manchester is out of the way, but again, it's on the, it's on the flat earth map. Um, who the uh, hell figured this out, Dave? That is, that is, this is uh, interesting. Flat, flat Earth Banjo, he used to work for the airline, so he's very knowledgeable in this stuff. And basically, it's not really that hard. You just have to understand that. You have to get all the data. He's got a book called 16 Emergency Landings Proving Flat Earth. And um, that, um, that it's a free PDF online. Um, it's a free PDF online that you can get, or you can get it at lulu.com. It's a great book. He's documented everything, all the news reports, all the flight paths, everything, customer testimony, whatever. It's all in there. And it's a great coffee table book. Um, and it's called 16 Emergency Land. <laughs> Excuse me. But the thing is, there's actually, there's been a lot of new ones, right? This is my favorite. Um, this one here, give me a second, is a flight from, it was from, um, uh, Hong Kong to the UK, but it stopped in Germany, right? 12 hour flight, right? And they're flying and right about here, a family was flying together. The mom died suddenly, weird, had a heart attack, died suddenly, young mom, right? Young kids, can't explain it. We got the vaccine. Hey, easy, easy. <laughs> you're joking. God bless Dr. It's Fauci. A joke. Yes, no jokes. It's a serious matter, okay? So four hours into the trip, and they flew for another eight hours. The little kids sitting next to their dead mom, husband sitting next to their dead wife for eight hours. How come they didn't land, right? And the answer is because they were over Russia. And if they landed in Russia, two things happened. One, Russia would be like, oh, let us help. And that could, that could spark peace, okay? We, we couldn't have that. And the other thing is, um, what the hell are we doing over Russia? And somebody might figure this out and then cause a big whoop, right? So they landed in Germany. Why didn't they just finish the trip and get to London, get the people home? Okay. At that point, Seriously. those kids are, are, are damaged forever. Um, it, it's, it's absolutely, it, it's, un, it's unexplainable. And uh, just another one, I'll just give you one more. Um, this one is from New York, right? Right near us to New Zealand, right about here, emergency. They stopped in Fiji. Well, why, it's about the same distance. It might even be longer. Why'd they go to Fiji, right? They, why didn't they just keep going to Auckland, New Zealand? And the answer is because if you look at it on a flat earth map, huh, Fiji's right in line. Fiji's not over here. Fiji's right here. Zoom in right there. Fiji, New Zealand, straight line. Weird how that always happens. Weird, weird. Can I have a weird? Yeah, it is weird. That's so, who weird, made this flat dude. Earth map, though? Where this flat Earth map come from? So the the flat Earth map is uh, the you know, and we don't claim to have a perfect map. Although the Gleason's map certainly does work, and that's what I use on on the app um, because you know on on the app, um, if you look wherever the sun is, so this when you're looking at the at the app. It's a top-down view. You're looking straight down from over the North Pole, and if you like, when when it's over here. I call my friend in uh, Australia and say, hey, where's the sun? And he goes, it's right above me. It's 12 o'clock. I'm like, oh, wherever the sun is, it's 12 o'clock. It works perfectly. And so I, then I call somebody, you know, when the sun's over here in Africa, like, yeah, it's right above me. So I challenge anyone, get the app. When the sun is directly over where you know somebody is, call them up and ask them where the sun is. And it's, they're going to say it's right over my head. Okay. Now, it won't be over their head in uh, here, but in December, it'll be right over their head. But if you know somebody that's right underneath the sun, it, 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 so 
there is something accurate because the sun is there, right? So um, when you say, where did the map come from? This map is the, is the Gleason's map. And it, it's been, it was, it's in every, uh, it's in every um, library and encyclopedia and schoolroom until 1950s when they removed it and pretended it didn't exist. Okay. Right. You know, people go, Oh, well, the earth is flat. How did they tack Pearl Harbor from, from Japan? Because they, they show on a, a laid out flat earth, I mean, globe map that it's a crazy trip. Here's Japan. And here's Hawaii. That's it. That's how they got there over a flat earth, a flat, non rotating earth. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to show you the, about the spin of the earth. If I, if I have Can I, but uh, on this topic, how far away do you think the sun is from? Wow. The earth? Great question. So, my personal feeling is the sun that we see is not the actual sun. It's more of a projection. Like when you take a magnifying glass and focus the sun onto a little dot and burn ants. I know that you did it. You probably still do it. Okay. I still do. Yes. So <laughs> if you lifted it up six inches in the air, that dot's not gone. It's six inches in the air. If you blew some fog into there, you would see it. It would be right there. And I think that's how the sun is being projected into our atmosphere. And so you go out and look at the sun on a sunny day. Well, that's how you'd have to look at it. Um, you can see that there's blue sky behind the sun. It's, it's right here, and then we all see it in a position relative to our, to our own position, right? Do you think it's like a reflector or something? I, I, how much more time do we have? Because I, I could show you some oh. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So what is it reflecting off of? Well, the, the, some people claim there's a dome. I think we see it when, in what we call an azimuthal grid of vision, and there's longer videos on that. You'd have to look, and I'll on the app in the homeschooling section under um, under schooling globers, there's a whole um, two hour stream on that. And uh, that it takes that much time to, to understand what you're seeing, but I'll show you optically how, how that works. So, so if I'm um, looking for my folder, where to go, there it is. Um, where is it? Okay. So, here I am in my room. I dropped a blue sheet down. I'm dividing the room. On the other side of the sheet, 10 feet away, I've got a light. It's actually a square light. It's a square flashlight. Really weird, but it looks round. It looks like a sphere. Okay. And so we're seeing, this is the projector. I'm not seeing the flashlight. I'm seeing the light that's on the sky sheet. So Paige is to my left. I say, I'm looking from her. She sees it right there. So I put a quick little X on that sheet. She's looking at the sun over there while I'm looking at it right there. We're looking at it in two different places. Right. We're looking at the same thing in two different places. So one could say we have a personal relationship with the sun. Interesting. Now, if and, you're that, standing, and that's what the sun, that's what the sun looks like. Kind of what you're showing. Looks, there. It looks just like that. It's crazy. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. I, I was playing around with the sheet and um, I was zooming in and out. And um, so here I, I was mo check, changing the focus. Right. It looks like a sun. Right. Mm. Doesn't that look like a sun? Yeah, I actually made a video where I showed that and I talked about, you know, that's not, and everyone's like, oh, it's amazing. And then I backed out and showed you that it was just a flashlight and everyone's like, yeah. what the heck? Right. So people want to believe what they want to believe and they'll believe anything um, as long as they don't have to do any work. You know, if you want to become super rich, invent something that makes people lazier. Okay. <laughs> like DoorDash. Not only do you yeah. not have to cook your fast food, they'll deliver it to your couch. So you don't even have to get up. Okay. Right. <laughs> so you get anything now. Yeah. So, um, but let, can I, let me show you another, let me just, let me take this point and, and slam it home um, with, uh, with eclipses. So this is one. And, and have you guys seen my eclipse explanation from the projected sky? Yeah, I've seen this. You've seen it. Okay. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll skip it. It's fine. Um, so there's so much more. You can find all my stuff at Flat Earth Day. Oh, we have to go to we have to go to the, the ISS. You want to see some, some yeah. hocus pocus yeah. on the ISS. Okay. Yeah, then we might just have a couple quick questions. So, um, to find who, right here who, who's our who's our ghost person? What's your name again? Jedi. 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 Do you have long hair, Jedi? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> Je Jedi, do you uh do you work out at the gym ever? You ever get sweaty? 
The exercise? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, let's pretend yeah. that you do. Don't answer that question. Don't answer the question. Is this, <laughs> is this woman having a good hair day? Okay. Look at her hair. This is a good hair yeah, day. Yeah. Does she have good, does she have like professionally done makeup on? So she's in space. She has professionally done makeup. Her hair, that's a great fucking hair day. Okay. Better than yours, Joseph. And your hair looks good. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and you're right. I'll grant you that. Right. She is so, dolled up. So for no yeah. reason. they get one shirt a month, one pair of socks every 10 days, one, wa- I don't know how often they get a new washcloth and a bag of water. Okay. Right. So she only takes sponge baths. She's been up there for six months. Look at her friggin' hair and makeup. Okay. If you don't have a problem with that, I can't help you. Okay. <laughs> I can't help you. That should be crusty hair right there. It should be disgusting. It, it, it <laughs> smell like like the worst dump sewage up there. On my channel, D I T R H, everybody subscribe there. I got short videos. Everything's under five minutes. Um, there's one. Scroll down until you find. I have to go to the bathroom. Okay, the ISS bathroom debunks space travel completely. It is the dumbest thing ever. Okay, it is so ridiculous, so disgusting. They poop in this little square box that has a plastic bag. Then they have a stick to push the poop down in. Okay, and then when it's full, they zip tie it off and they throw it out into space. Okay, (laughs) okay. Who washes the poop stick? Okay, what happens if you have diarrhea? Right? It's it's so stupid. It's so stupid. I I, the the I, I I have a challenge out. Um, get that. Make that same toilet here, you know, they have an ISS and have somebody use it for a week here on Earth with gravity assisting the downward direction, the ledge gravity. Right, right. OK, and let alone space, please. It's so friggin dumb. It, it's unbelievable. So. Um, so ISS, right. ISS grew up. So here we go. Um, this one. This one. So here's Kamala Harris talking to the space station, and they're always playing with stuff, playing with their microphones and stuff. So here's this guy, and he's playing with this wire, right? Like, yeah. oh, it's oh, this is cool. And everything you always have to have something floating. Long hair. Would they ever let anyone with long hair in space? They don't even let them in a friggin' airplane, you know, a fighter jet, a, like a pilot. Okay. But a little screw up, the watch the wire goes right through his arm. It goes right through his arm. Ready? I'm gonna zoom in a little farther. And it, it, it's literally is a layering issue. You go a little farther. Where, hold on. You had like, Dave, you had like the same thing before. Like an orange went through someone's hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show you that. Look, it's going right what through his heck? hand. Yeah, yeah. So watch, watch, watch. It's going, it's behind his hand. And it went right through his, right through his wrist. Right through his wrist. No problem. Right? This is all augmented reality. This is all complete and total garbage. Okay? Um, yeah. I want to find the lemon. I've been actually, I haven't shown the lemon in a while, but let me, uh, I'll oh, get the lemon. Yeah. 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 Um, here's one Don Pettit. He's like talking about, Oh, we have space coffee. We don't like drinking out of a bag. So he made a cup out of this, uh, leftover piece of plastic. And then he's like, Oh, look, it's floating. Now watch the coffee. Watch all of a sudden it dislayers. It dis. Oh, yeah. what happened there? <laughs> what happened? So this is showing you that it's complete and total, um, CGI garbage, right? Garbage. Look at that. Look at that. Right. Don Pettit loves, not Don Pettit, uh, Chris Hatfield loves uh, yeah. playing his guitar. Right. They got a seven second delay, but he sings with an orchestra on earth without any delay. It's crazy. But this is one. <laughs> this guy is holding this microphone inside of his neck. He misplayed. They're in different rooms. Okay. In different yeah. screen rooms. And the microphone is inside his neck. Oh, that's cosmic rays. You don't understand the radiation in space. And uh, that's why it looks like that way. I mean, the Glober arguments are absolutely and completely, totally retarded. All right. Um, Oh, what the hell? Yeah. And then, you know, and they use all different techniques, green screens. Now watch this guy's left arm. He moves it in a way. There was a little glitch right there. Again, cosmic rays. But watch what happens. You don't see anything green behind him. But when he moves his arm, oh, oh, what, what is that? A little green screen glitch. Yeah. Okay. Green screen. Why are they using green screens in space? Why are they using green screens in space? Yeah. Right? Okay. So here's, here's one. These guys were talking. This guys are always flipping their hat around, flipping the microphone around. This guy goes in way in the background, zooms by. No one saw it. I zoomed in. He's like literally like 40 yards away. And so I zoomed in and, uh, and, you can see the harness and the wire. Yeah. Okay. And then the NASA apologists go, well, they wear harnesses with wires for safety. How, how, how does zero degree having wires, like how, like you, you would strangle yourself. It would, you just get tangled. 
Okay. Now in the yeah. script, he's supposed to hand this guy the hat or something. And he moves his arm and this guy thinks he sees it because the monitor that has these CGI objects, the hat is in front of them. And now watch, I'm going to zoom out. Watch, he moves his right arm. Here it goes. One, two, three. And he thinks that's the hat and he takes it and puts it away. Oops. I'm just looping it here. Oh my God. Okay. He takes it and loops <laughs> it away. All right. And then, then they get kids, right? Kids, yeah. right? This balloon, this ball is real. It's filled with helium and it, she's playing with it. And it's kind of just at that neutral buoyancy. But that, did you see that? Watch again. Nothing's there. And now it's there. Yeah. So that is augmented reality. And she's manipulating it. This absolutely proves that they use leap motion augmented reality. And NASA has contracts with all of these augmented reality companies, with wire harness companies, with like all green screen companies. They have these huge contracts with them, public. But nobody cares. Nobody notices. Nobody cares. No, what is that? George Carlin has to say, nobody, nobody cares. Nobody notices. Whatever. Um, it goes, uh, here's a, what's this green screen glitch? Oh, yeah. This one, mm. everything that's floating glitches out at the last second. It's a weird glitch. <laughs> okay? Mm. But there, nothing else glitches out. Just the things that were floating. All right? Right? Yep. Um, yeah, that's weird. So, so um, this is just showing you uh, the Argo system. This is what they uh, practice on, right? So they're they're practicing for spacewalks. Okay, look at this guy, and look at this guy. Is there a difference? Mm -hmm. Is there a difference? Mm -hmm. Okay, sometimes yeah, right. they do spacewalks on. Under, and they have, remember the gorilla suit. There's spacewalks underwater. Um, sometimes they uh, sometimes they don't. They, they do them with harnesses. So they do, they do all sorts of stuff. So you're still guessing. This guy's going around a corner. There is no corner on a zero-G plane. And so, oh, they faded him out a little too soon. Look, he's transparent. Mm. <clears throat> that just shows there's a crossfade there. So you're not showing you anything real, just like his hamburger disappears every time he wants to bite it. It's no difference. <laughs> there's oh no difference. Oh, my God. I, I used to have that in one of those speak and says when I was a those kid. Those are great. Yeah. Um, again, all of the main actors, you know, Will Smith, you know, talking to the ISS, I don't want to go there and getting all the kids in. It's all about that. Right. And so at the end, the guy goes up, uh, where's he going? Where's the ceiling? I thought this thing like, what, like, well, maybe that's another passageway, but then he comes to you and then he fades. He, like, there's like a weird fade out. I think that does this one show it. Wait a minute. That's, uh, Faded out. Is that the fade out one? I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. Oh, look, he just faded out there. You yeah. See? Oh, yeah. What the like, heck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's transparent. Okay. Right. Now, are these videos are you showing like public? Can anyone look at these or yeah, they're, they're, your channel? Well, no, there, there, there's so many videos out there. Just go watch the NASA friggin' yeah. rocket launch channel. Oh, let me, let me show you the rocket. I want to go to the rocket launches for a second. Um, where is my rocket launch? be under rockets all right so so this one is um this is interesting let me see if i can do this i haven't shown this yet all right so this is what i call thrust so you ever see the air the one an airplane when they test uh the the jet on an airplane okay and it just totally blows that 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 bus away that's a yeah. jet on an airplane on a runway now the run the jet is sitting on wheels on a runway and the and it's pushing backwards okay so it's not even rolling yet it, it does have the brakes on but it's not even rolling and it's it's just to, you know so the the thrust isn't even that much because the thrust to push that plane just straight up would have to be a lot more than to roll it down the runway right that's why they roll down the runway they get speed and everything so think about the amount of thrust that it would take to push that airplane up now that airplane only weighs i don't know x whatever it is right but right. when you look at rockets rockets weigh way more than those jets they're filled with fuel they weigh you know dozens of tons okay and they're going straight up straight up so the amount of thrust is insane you guys have ever been um you've been in a hurricane um <clears throat> it's crazy 120 mile hour winds are insane 200 mile hour winds are super yeah. destructive a tornado has like 250 300 mile hour winds They'll 
turn trees into splinters. They'll pull cement out of the ground. That's a 300 mile an hour room temperature wind. The thrust that comes out of a rocket is superheated. It's not cold, that's for sure. But take the heat out of it. Let's just take the thrust, the power of the thrust, okay? The power of the thrust. So watch, all the smoke just comes out of nowhere, okay? So all this smoke, right? And then it goes up into the sky, and then there's no smoke, and you have all the thrust. Now, right here, the amount of thrust going down, if you were anywhere within, I don't know, a quarter of a mile in there, the blast wave of energy of thrust, because it's lifting all of that up, okay? It's lifting all of that up. How come that smoke? Now, that, you say, well, there's a, there's a summer breeze going from right to left. See the summer breeze? It's just taking the gust with it. Where's all that thrust? This should just be obliterated. It should obliterate that tower. It should obliterate. Why doesn't the smoke move? At the very least, Dave, I was just going to say, I would at least, if nothing else, that the smoke would drop and scatter from the propulsion. That's what I'm saying. The propulsion should yeah. obliterate that smoke. Okay. Yeah. It should yeah. obliterate that smoke, right? And when these rockets go up, they just go out and they crash into Bermuda Triangle where nobody kind of hangs out there. Weird that that's a you know, not occupied place. And if somebody is out there by chance, by accident, that got through you know, the restricted area, uh, they might just disappear. And then, oh, the Bermuda Triangle got someone else, huh? You know? Yeah, but what do you think is happening there with that rocket? Do you think it's not really a rocket taking off? What, I what think, do you say? No, they, they, so some of the rockets, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the rockets are um, pure CGI. Some of them are, uh, I think that one was pure CGI. Some of the times they're launching um, balloons, right? They're just healing balloons yeah. like the space shuttle. Um, and other times they don't launch anything and it's just a, just a movie. Um, but it, it's, it's when you look at it and, um, you know, and start seeing what's going on. Now, I believe they do launch, you know, smaller rockets up into the sky, but not, they're not nearly the size that they tell us, right? You guys have seen it when, um, now this is something going up and it looks like it ends up scraping the, the firmament, right? Yeah. Are we looking up or are we looking down? This is weird, okay? Look at this little thing right here. I don't know what that is, but here's a guy wake surfing, okay? <laughs> here's a guy wake surfing on water, I don't know. Maybe NASA's wake surfing up on the firmament. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but they're not going to space. All right. They're not going to space. Um, I'm trying to find the, the map. By the way, yeah, just a point of reference to just for the audiences in general, but the international space station. Yeah. Is only 254 miles above the earth's surface. Yeah. Which, in the grand scheme of things, even by you know NASA's standards or whatever, um, that's that's not even breaking the atmosphere, right? So it, it's um, you're not really in space. Yes. Yeah. So um, the I'm trying to find a quick image here for you. Um, <clears throat> where is it? That's that. Um, so when when uh, when uh, Elon Musk launched his Tesla in space, right? With total total ridiculous, but you could see the unbelievable the whole globe Earth. Now the space station doesn't have a view of this. Space station can't see any curvature. It's not high enough. Okay, right. This is only 170 miles up. Space station's 250. Right. Okay. Both more fake. BS. More yeah. more and total complete and total BS. Right. Complete and total BS, yeah. right? So is that, a, is that a complete lie that pilots can tell the Earth is round? Because you hear people say that, like, oh, I just asked a pilot. Yeah, no, we've we've talked to many pilots. Most of them know the Southern pilot, the pilots like for Qantas that do the Southern routes, they all know. Um, and many, many, and more and more pilots know now. Um, on, the, on the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, if you click the <clears throat> Frequently Asked Questions button and go to the, are all pilots, and scientists in on it. Where is that button? It's on there somewhere. Um, there's a button for pilots and scientists. Where is it? Space agencies. Oh, right there. Pilots and scientists. Um, we have tons of whistleblowers there. There's astronauts that have whistleblown. The Polish astronaut said, we never went to space. Earth is flat. And then he disappeared. You know, Buzz Aldrin said, no, we, you didn't watch. We land on the moon. That was all CGI. That was all, that was an animation, right? 
they're telling us all the time. And then Neil Armstrong, in one of his speeches at a commencement speech, he ended it by saying, one day, hopefully, the protective veil of lies, the veil of information will be revealed or whatever. Basically, a very cryptic message saying, (laughs) one day, the truth is going to come out. One day, one day, the 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 truth is, is going to come out. So, have, have you seen Moonwalkers? Moonwalkers. I, I just saw that last week with Ron Perlman. That was a great movie. It was about them oh. filming a video in case they didn't land on on the moon. <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was really good. That, and and another good one is um, what's the one about where they were going to Mars and then the spaceship blew up and they had to kill the astronauts because they didn't they were still alive on Earth. Kind of. Well, I don't think I know that one. It's called. It's. It's. Yes, you have. It's um, a Capricorn one. Capricorn one. Look that up. It's great. I'll, I'll great. Look that up. Um, this is kind of off the subject, but I know Jedi. We were talking about this. We were kind of curious where you stand on. Um, do you think there's a cure for cancer? And they're like all covering it up. Oh my God! There's so many cures for cancer. It's ridiculous. There's. And there, there was cures years ago, but they're all been they all been suppressed. Cancer is like the number one driver. Do you know what? There was no cancer before people started getting things in their arms back in the you know, was it fifties or forties or whatever it was. I mean, cancer took off when the, when this became a popular thing. <clears throat> hmm. The CDC <clears throat> admits I'm choking on my tea. Admits they um, and on one of the influenza vaccines one year. Um, they, I got to be careful what I say because we don't want to get a strike here. Um, that they they put the S and the letter D, well, I'll say it, um, and the number forty, it, uh, it was was actually put into the 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 plunger. Okay, and and over a hundred million people got it, and that's the 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 virus that causes cancer. Okay. 100 million Americans got it. Oh, my gosh. They gave it to everybody, and nobody cares. No, nobody sees them. Nothing matters. Nobody cares. Okay? And, and it just goes on and on from there. I know cures for cancer. Okay? I know that there's energy cures. The Rife machine. Amazing. Right? I, I, down in Mexico, um, I, uh, I'm friends with a guy that builds these Tesla coils. And uh, they had people that had... Um, inoperable brain tumors and somehow by coincidence, I'm not claiming that their machines or anything. Um, the, the entire thing went away when they used the machine. Okay. Entire thing went away. Okay. It's, it's unreal. You know, it, it, the whole, I don't want to say I'm, I'm stumbling on my words because I want this to be on YouTube, but <laughs> the answer is yes. They're they're. Yeah. It's not even, they don't even lie about what it is. You know, it's caused by parasites and, and, and other toxins. If you just keep yourself clean, um, you're not going to get that thing. Me and Joe talk about sometimes where when Magic Johnson got AIDS, that was like an automatic death sentence. And he's like completely fine. Yeah, he's now. totally fine. Wait, but again, they, oh, this is what I wanted to show you. Um, it, that's another psyop. Who's the one guy that survives the intercourse disease? The guy with a magic Johnson. Oh oh my God. (laughs) Okay. That's pretty good. Okay. Okay. Um, And they love, they love their, um, they love their sexual innuendos, right? The first shot that SpaceX, whoops, that's what I want to show you. The first shot that SpaceX um, showed from space is this, and it says sex in the clouds. Okay. Right. Oh, you guys that, yeah. So sex in the clouds. Very, very interesting. Right. So then, you know, this is just maybe my dirty mind, but this is what they show us. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Cock and balls comes to, comes to, to, to mind, but maybe I'm just a dirty old man. Okay. And then if you look at Jeff Bezos's rocket, Jeff Bezos' rocket couldn't look anything more like a phallic dick, right? Yeah. If you don't know what it looks like, this is his rocket, and this is Virgin Galactic's rocket. Do you see any similarity? Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Wait, hold on. There's more. There's more. Okay. So whenever Jeff Bezos launches a rocket, the cameraman either has Tourette's or something, and he has this upward, down, not left or right. He can keep yeah. it in focus, 
but he's got this up and down little twitch of the penis rocket. Okay. The yeah. penis rocket. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are they, well, why would they do that? You know, why would they do that? Please. And then the first um, illustration from NASA when they talked about going to the moon is this. Okay. Is this right? Yeah. Right. Am I a dirty old man? All right. Oh Everything that you've shown us is phallic shaped. One more. And so, you know, Don Pettit talked about that. Well, they're tired of drinking their coffee out of, uh, you know, would you drink coffee in space? First, the coffee is going to float around with all your stomach acids. It's going to go through your digestion. How you wouldn't have explosive diarrhea and destroy the entire space station <laughs> is beyond, beyond what, even imaginable. Okay. But they like drinking out of cups. So they built a special cup. They built a special cup. Okay. All right. What does that look like? What does that look like? <laughs> it's a vagina. It even has, oh, the, oh. it's a vagina. Okay. So and then the way, when they, when they show them drinking out of, they're drinking out of it, like, like literally like, like they're it, like, it's a sexual experience. Cause it is for them. All right. <laughs> Crazy. Well, you know how Dunkin' Donuts is around here, Dave. People are yeah. obsessed. They can't just go a little bit without coffee. I know people are, people are crazy. They, they love their coffee. They love indoctrinating kids. They love, you yeah. know, they, NASA is literally cartoon space is cartoons for adults and kids, right? You talk to any kid, what do you want to grow up? I want to be an astronaut. They've got them. They've trapped their mind. They have them mm -hmm. living on a ball. Why does it matter? Let's talk about why it matters. Then we'll wrap it up. I know we're super over, um, but I think this was a, a good conversation. Yeah. Okay. So, so why does it matter? And the thing is your thoughts create your reality. If they can keep your thoughts in fear and in lack, we're running out of food, we're running out of land, we're running out of water, we're running out of energy, we're running out of the asteroids going to take us out, you know, we're, you know, and you're believing in that and then you give away, you live in fear, you, your thoughts lose their manifestation power. And then if you're like, well, I just, you know, we just have this globe. What if there's more, more land? What if there's more land than, uh, than just this globe? What if there's more land beyond Antarctica? Now, I don't need to speculate what's beyond Antarctica. Um, where am I going here? Um, I don't need to speculate what's beyond Antarctica, but it's fun to. So how would you hide the earth? So here's a, a map and let's say um, this is the regular Mercator map and we cut out you know, part of South America and North America and we wrap it around a sphere and we teach kids in school. There's no boats, there's no planes, okay? And we teach kids in school there is no Europe. There is no Australia. There is no Africa. There's just this part of here. And you're not allowed to go to this white dot. It's very dangerous. We have to protect the ice and the penguins. Okay. Right. So this is all that there is. And then you wouldn't even know that Europe existed. Right. We don't have radios. We don't have anything. Okay. You wouldn't know. And this is your prison. Okay. So what if the world was like this? Joseph, pay attention here. You may have, maybe you've seen this. Okay. So we have all of these ponds. We live in a pond. We live in the center of this one right here, okay? These ponds, pieces of the plane, a planet, if you will. And we cut it out and we wrap it around a sphere and we say, this is where you live and you're not allowed to explore south. South is this white area, which is at the bottom of a ball that nobody seems to be able to circumnavigate, okay? You're not allowed to go explore here. This is all that there is, okay? This is a problem, right? This is a prison for your mind. And it stops you from using your full potential, gaining your full potential, becoming the true superpower person that you are. They don't want you to know that you have psychic abilities. They don't want you to know that you have freedom, that you have God-given uh, rights. And nobody can give you your rights. They can only try to take them away. And they can't take them away unless you agree. So they trick you into agreeing, right? They trick you into into agreeing to all of their nonsense. Dave, uh, what are you there your with, real quick, real quick on, on Antarctica, uh, Richard Bird, the pilot said that he flew into a cavern in his diaries and, and, and talked about seeing all sorts of stuff in Antarctica. Yeah. So, so Antarctica, when, um, when Richard Bird went out there uh, and said, there's more land bigger than the United States, uh, that no human has ever set foot upon. Uh, he was, he was, whoops, I want to show you. Um, 
he was reigned as a hero. And uh, then everyone said, all right, all the countries jump aboard. We can't go to Antarctica anymore. Wait, I discovered more land. No people are there. No animals are there. There's, there's no environmental issues, even though environmentalism wasn't a word back then. And it's filled with resources. And then every country in the world ends up agreeing that we can't go there and explore. Okay, wait a minute. Wait, well, we have to protect the ice and the penguins. Wait a minute. We can destroy the Amazon, but we got to protect the ice and the penguins. And there's resources there and there's no people to displace. And I mean, it's retarded. All right. I'm using the word because it is retarded. All right. And, and Adam Bird had his, uh, you know, his, his, um, his parades and they made a, he's a, he's a big guy, you know, he's a, he's a big deal. Um, but, but what is, what is really out there? And the, 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 the truth is we don't know. There are there's stories of the iron Republic about, uh, you know, in the 1800s about more land beyond Antarctica with advanced civilizations, right? Advanced civilizations out there, right? Let me, let me, let me show you this. You guys have probably seen this, but I added some new stuff to it. This is a uh, ship tracking website. You can track all cargo ships. We found some ships that were crazy distances, 730 miles inland from the closest bay. Seven, how does an active ship get 730 miles inland? Okay. And it's 1.9 miles above sea level. How, even if there was an inlet, how did it get 1.9 miles above sea level? Okay. How, how does that happen? Right. So here's another one, nine, <clears throat> 905 miles inland, 905 miles, right? 2.37 miles above. And he's almost at the center. That's almost where the alleged South Pole is. Okay. Wow. How does a ship get there? Okay. How does the ship get there? And uh, the answer is, what if, okay, what if the world was set up like this, right? And when they take you from Santiago to the center of this island here, which is bigger than the United States, Canada, Mexico doubled, they tell you you're at Antarctica and this is it. And they tell you that there's an ice wall all the way around, but in reality, it's open waterways to other lands. But nobody is allowed to explore beyond 60 degrees south. So you would never even be able to see them, never be able to get close enough to zoom in on them. Okay, maybe you would, right? Yeah. But so, so what happens if, um, what's going on here? Why did that happen? Oh, there you go, sorry about that. Um, so one of those ships we looked at it said it was from the island of Kiribati or the nation of Kiribati. Where's Kiribati? Out here in the middle of the South Pacific, nowhere, right? There it is. I put a pin on it. It's a tiny little sand atoll, a coral atoll or whatever you want to call it. And uh, China gave them $10 billion recently. It's a very important trade route. America, I think they gave them billions and billions recently. And we're all interested in this little island. Why would a ship need to stop there? Why would a ship need to stop there? Right? For it to be a, to be a trade route, and here's the other thing. You know that Captain Cook tried to circumnavigate Antarctica. It's only thirteen thousand miles around. Took him two and a half, three and a half years. He went over sixty eight thousand miles. There's a Captain Cook hotel in Kiribati. Coincidence? We got a ship wow. that's in a possible place. You got a Captain Cook yeah. hotel. Okay, not done. There's more. Yeah. Okay. So recently, we're looking at ship tracking on Kiribati, and we see all of these ships here at their giant. They have a gigantic pier, by the way gigantic pier and we're looking at them and either they're going to an unknown destination or they're going to Christmas Island, Christmas Island, Santa Claus, Satan Claus. Like they're, they're mocking us, Dave. They're they're Well, maybe that's their, their, their code or whatever. So you got all these <laughs> ships going, going to weird or nowhere places yeah. this little island what 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 could they ex be exporting from there there's not even enough land to grow anything most of it's unpopulated right what are they trading are they trading computer chips tuna fish children i don't know weapons maybe maybe who all knows of the above oh, all of the above so yeah there's a whole bunch of a whole bunch of other things right so on a, on a flat earth on a, on a globe Earth, you have 24 lines coming from North Pole to South Pole, evenly divided. And those are all your time zones. They just spin around. So they should all be perfectly straight, straight curved 
lines dividing the world up into time zones makes perfect sense do you know that there's how many how many time zones that there's time zones in uh in the north there's 18 time zones and in the south there's 32 time zones and if you look how they're broken up it actually is the perfect way to hide the globe hide the flat earth and make it work on a globe there's 32 time zones. it doesn't work but there's also this weird time zone time zone at the um at the at the date line and if we look at that time zone right there's there's over three and a half time zones in here but they're claiming this is one time zone Guess what's in the weirdest spot of all? Kiribati. Yep. Okay. Right in that little nook. Like, right why there. would there be a little like, nook like that? You know, you know what this means? I don't, but I want to know. I mean, there's yeah. too many strikes. And then if you watch, look at all the news from years ago, and the Kiribati, nuclear testing there. They're blowing up nuclear bombs there left and right. But people are living there. Okay, no problem. It's like they don't want people going there. Like, I don't want to go there. They blew up nuclear bombs there. It's radiation. Well, you shouldn't go to Vegas either then. OK, yeah. Um, speaking of Vegas, we're having a conference in Las Vegas, October 21st, and 22nd called Flattoberfest. And you can check it out on my website at flatearthday.com. Um, one of the reports, uh, one of the soldiers said he goes, the, the nuclear bomb was so crazy. When I put my hand over my face, I could see my bones of my hands through my hands <laughs> like Bugs Bunny. OK, that's, yeah. what, that's what he said in an interview. OK, they're mocking us. OK, they're mocking us. Um, Can you go back you one that. slide? Oh, go back one slide. Go ahead. What do you want me to do? When you go, can you go back to the um, the the big map with the? It was like a rainbow globe, a rainbow map. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna take me a second. Um, the where is it? Oh, over here. Um, that was all the time zones, and uh, that's just showing you all the the alleged time zones. Um. Hold on. There it is. Time zones. Okay. That one. Yep. Todd wanted to show that one more time for gay pride month. <laughs> I knew you were going Todd, there. What are you doing for gay pride month? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I, uh, I don't want to say it. Never mind. <laughs> no, if you put gay hey, I support pride the as, as one, uh, listen, I have no problem with people, whatever your situation is, but this whole agenda is insane. Gay pride put together has the word demon in it. I don't know. It's just a coincidence. I'm sure. <laughs> Interesting. I, God, I, I, Dave. I, I did want to ask Dave this question, like without going down a whole rabbit hole, but like, so you live kind of equidistant to like uh, New York city and also Sandy hook. You must know someone, a friend of a friend or someone that either died in one of those tragedies. No. Cause I know you don't believe in them. That's, that's the only reason I'm asking. So, so that's another discussion you're not allowed to have on uh, on here, but I have lots of information. I was involved in several documentaries about that. And here's the thing. Don't believe anything I say. If you want to know the truth about that, that's been removed from YouTube, write, write this website down, stoplookthink.com, and then search Sandy and the fishing thing. And, um, yeah. and then uh, – Watch a few of those videos. There's one of them called Unraveling SH by um, in two, three, four, and five dimensions. Um, that one will that one will hook you. Okay, that one will that one will get you to see the deception. And there's so many many things. It's not a theory. It's an emotional topic that people can't look at the logic. But um, you know, it's crazy from people winning the lottery fifty friggin' times. Right to every one of those families was everyone but one or two of the families that had somebody uh, involved was packed up and ready to move before it happened and move the next day. Weird. They all moved to the town within the year of it happening. So all the people that happened happened to their kid, they moved there the same year and they moved out the day after. They were all packed up like they were brought in for a project and then they left. Okay, very very weird. Wouldn't you say? Isn't that weird? Make it a weird. But Joe, Joe, I think this is one we just have to agree to disagree with him. Otherwise, we're going to go down a rabbit hole. Well, I don't want you to go down a rabbit hole. I want you to go watch the video and make up your yeah. own mind. Don't listen to anything I have to do, right? And, the, and those mm -hmm. families, you know, setting up their GoFundMes before the three days before it happened. That's weird. Don't, can I get a weird on that one? The, Robbie Parker mm -hmm. set up his GoFundMe three days before the event happened. Weird, right? And... 
That the, was a mistake you weren't supposed to see. Yeah, wait, wait. And then the other thing is, um, you guys have kids, right? When uh, when you have kids yeah. in first grade, you're um, the average age, I don't know, 25 to 32 years old. The average age of those parents was something like 47. The average age of all of the parents that had a kid involved was something like 47 or it was a number that never, ever, ever anywhere in the world has ever happened ever anywhere in any class of first graders. You do not have that average age. Weird. Weird. Joe, that's something I wouldn't mind looking into a little bit because. Yeah, for sure. Stop, I mean, just, listen, stop looking at com. Here's the thing. You can believe whatever you want. It's easy to believe. It takes no effort. Stop looking.com. There's a whole bunch of videos. Take a week. Watch those videos. Yeah. Okay. Watch those videos and don't watch it with the purpose of debunking them. Right. And you won't be able to. Mm -hmm. So there you go. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Jedi, did you have a question? She's blown no. away. She passed out. Okay. Well, I think basically if you got this far and you haven't watched, definitely click on the link so you can watch because this won't make much sense unless you're actually watching the video. Um, Dave, we love having you on. This is the third time with you. This is our 100th show. Oh, nice. I appreciate that. Um, just one other thing. On the on the app, the Friend Finder, we hit 104,000. So if you think the Flat Earth is uh, not real, um, just take a look at the app. Let this page load for a second. Um, Look at all the people in uh, in the United States. Look, I'll zoom in on Connecticut. Pretty crazy. Where is Connecticut? Can't even see. Yeah. Look at all these people. These are all flat earthers. Okay. And on the app, you can message them. You can people get together. People are getting married. People are getting jobs. People are hiring people. People are doing all sorts of stuff um, using Taking over the globe using the friend finder. And uh, it's it's taking a big upgrade coming. Very soon, it's going to be like Facebook, whole social media thing. You can friend people. You do all sorts of stuff. Like if I watch, if I go to my uh, my profile, um, this is what the new profile is going to be like. You can post things and um, oh, cool. Sort of yeah, it's going to be cool. And you can friend people and then you're going to be able to play interactive games. I've got like this tile game that's coming out and I'll be able to connect with you, connect with a friend. And then we can play each yeah. other and talk to each the, other while we do it. Earth. I get the flat earth map. So there, Dave, there where, is, where is the friend finder on here? It's the handshake button. The handshake. Um, so I'm on the regular flat earth clock uh, screen. I the can't. Handshake. I'll show you. I'll show you where it is. Um, so go to. Oh, I got it. I got it. The handshake. All right. And then the, oh, first, okay. I, the first time you register. go there, it's going to ask you to register. Listen, the, the app um, takes no personal information. You can even put a fake email address in there. Just don't forget your password. Right. Okay. Just just because. Right. <clears throat> And and then um so once you're in there you can check it out and uh, and you get messages like hey we had a I, we did a radius message I said everyone within 50 kilometers we're having a yeah. meetup at Rico's Pizza in Stanford and 75 people showed up it was amazing yeah. damn amazing and Joe and Jedi you guys know I'll meet someone from this app dude yeah. there's so yeah, many there people go. there's so many people here's the thing <laughs> every blue dot every blue dot on there is somebody that you can be best friends with. That's somebody that could even be more than a best friend, depending on your life situation. Um, right. And everyone, like, I've never met a blue dot I don't like. Everyone on there knows that we don't live on a spinning ball. That's a huge step, right? They know yeah. that, uh, you know, the boogeyman is not real, okay? They know lots of things. And so if you're of that mindset, there's no, no better true friend finder. Look, a new person just joined. It's growing super fast. It's growing super yeah. fast. If no, I wait. was going to have a side piece, I would yeah. want her to be a flat earther. Damn yeah. right. Damn right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a hot, that's a hot woman right yeah, there. Yeah, dude. That's a hot <laughs> chick right there. Yeah. You know it. Dave, what was the website again for the convention? <laughs> the convention of, so it, very easy, right? It, it's on flat earth festivals.com. But if you just hit the shopping cart button on the app, yeah. The first, uh, the, ugh, that's not even there. Actually, it's not on here yet because we're waiting because we're actually having a, um, a conference, an online conference, June 23rd and June 24th. <clears throat> it's called yeah. um, the Mount Maru Summit. And uh, you get 50% off if you use my code. And it's, so it's like 50 bucks. It's a two-day full conference about health, about flat earth, about yeah. um, all freedom. It's mind-blowing. It's such a great thing. Um, uh, it, it's fantastic. So come to the conference and then 
you know, come virtually to the conference. And by the way, yeah. if you're busy for part of the day, it's all right. Just go back and watch it later. It, you, you have access to it forever afterwards. Um, it's phenomenal. But um, flatearthdave.com, the link to the conference is there and the link right at the top yeah. of the page, the link to um, the Flattoberfest in Vegas, October 21st and 22nd, that weekend. Um, and it's going to be a super amazing, amazing time. But uh, no, more, yeah. more importantly, right now, the, the Flat Earth Virtual Summit um, flatearthdave.com. Check that out. And you know what? Even if you don't believe the earth is flat, you're going to learn some stuff and then you'll know the earth is flat also, but that's a, that's a side benefit, but you're going to learn some stuff about how mm-hmm. David Avocado Wolf is going to be there. His presentation alone is going to, will blow your mind, blow your mind. And I'll be there think, on, on a panel also. I, I think it'd be a blast. And um, now you're me and you are both Caribbean guys. I love the Caribbean. Would yeah. you still take the trip to, <laughs> The Flat Earth Festival over like a free paid trip to the Caribbean? Oh, if I had a choice, free paid trip to the Caribbean or Flattoberfest? Is that what you're saying? I have to make a yeah. choice? I, yeah. I, I would do Flattoberfest if it's the same amount of time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was that. And, and it, it would have been tough for a couple of years ago because now I spend uh, two months in Mexico every winter. So, um, yeah. so I can, uh, I, I, I have my, my Caribbean, my, my tropical. Uh, it's scratch yeah. is fixed. Nice. <laughs> I have my fit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think we're going to wrap this up, but thanks so much for uh, coming on with us, Dave. And uh, like I said, we're going to put the video up on YouTube and um, this is the third time. So thanks a lot. Appreciate it. The app, by the way, is $3. There's an $11 a year subscription. If you want to be able to message people, you don't have to get it. I would like you to get it, but, and you might want to get it because it's, it, it just does a lot more. It's $11. Basically we're at a bar. You bought me a margarita and you stiff the bartender on a tip. All right. So, and that's for a year. Right. But but wait, also just one other thing on the, on the app. If you, if you're in the friend finder and you click this button right here, that creates, that shows you your referral page. You get a random number right here. Just click the pencil, edit it. You can change yours to Todd. All right. That's a good name. Yeah. And, um, and then anyone, if someone you're talking flat earth with somebody, which you will be, because you'll be obsessed with it once you realize it's flat. You'll you'll say, they'll say where to get the app. Say oh yeah. By the way, when it asks you for a referral code, just put in my name. And if you get eleven points or more, you can trade them in for a year subscription. Right? Okay. I make it. I make yeah. it pretty oh, easy. That's so cool. And it's, yeah. and it's, it's also fun because you can go on the leaderboard, and uh, if you look on the leaderboard, these are the top fifty people that um if it loads. There it is. The top fifty people. Um, the, the referral. So you can you can see what everyone's doing. <laughs> Caleb, and Joe, do you think here. I'm going to win that one? 2,200 oh man in America came out of nowhere into third place with 218. He did a Todd, Todd would convert the people at NASA to join the flat earth society. Oh, we, this we, is about referrals. We're not the flat earth society. Okay. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That's controlled opposition. So, <laughs> well, this was awesome. Yeah. All right. All right. And uh, next time you book me, you get, you at least have to check off. I'm not sure if it's a globe, okay? Because you checked off a spinning globe, right? You guys, yeah. are, you guys are way past the spinning globe. Come on. Yeah, we are. Okay, okay. We definitely are dead. Yeah, you just, it's deal. easier to say it's a spinning globe because then you don't have to deal with all of the ignorant people that have no idea that they don't know. Yeah. All right? All right. <laughs> all right, guys. All right, thanks so much. The end is here. Thank you so much for Dave Weiss for coming back to our show, Crimes, Conspiracies, and Beyond. Please subscribe. Check us out on Clovercrest Media, Facebook, and Spotify. All you got to do is believe and Artica and beyond. Peace out.